So West Ham and the Premier League are currently celebrating rainbow laces, making football a more welcoming experience for everyone. Now I'm actually here today at the West Ham Supporters Club outside the London Stadium and I'm here to chat to West Ham's LGBTQ plus support community called the Pride of Irons. Now I actually want to find out a little bit about them, the sort of work that they've been doing as well alongside West Ham and actually what I can do to help support them as an ally. So let's do it. Essentially, it's an LGBTQIA plus group to really sort of basically we want to get bums back on seats, make a safe space for people to, and like us to all meet up. That's what we're there for as well. That is the basic of it, really. So, what was it that inspired you to start this group? Was there like a certain experience, or did you just think, do you know what, you know, we need to get more out there? Do you know what I mean? Well, it was just back in the day, it was in the 90s, and you know, I was a proper like little old school, like little lesbian, do you know what I mean? So, couldn't really hide it back then, really. It was just basically not feeling welcome. It was that, you know, you were getting nudged as you walk into the station. Nothing really physical or anything like that, but like getting blanked and just knowing that, that you know, the stares and certain looks and just feeling, oh, it just, it did, uh, yeah, ruin my mental health, to be fair, because it's part of your family. I always say I came out of the room, Clarence and Blues, you know what I mean? It's not a choice, it's your start. So then to feel not comfortable and not feel welcome, it was just easier just to leave and walk away. But now I'm older, I'm harder than I was before and I don't want anyone else to feel like that. We're here, we'll all support each other. It's not bad as it used to be, nowhere near it. It's safe, it's safe to come back to home. So that's what I was going to ask. So it started in 2015 yep. and what has been like the difference from starting in 2015 to like where you are now? You must have seen like massive progression. Totally. I mean, the club just literally coming up and saying, look, we've got all this LGBTQIA merch. We didn't even know. We just went into the shop and there's like rainbows everywhere. You know, it wasn't for the NHS. It was, you know, queer merchandise and things. So it's all that working well with the club as well. It's been massive changes. You know, it's all about conversations. I think that's really important. Ones like this, for instance, it means the world because that's what makes a difference. You know, it's okay having all these symbolic gestures, you know, like wearing the armbands and having all that, but it's conversations that make a difference. People like you, talking to people like you, spreading the word, making it normal. Everything just needs to be normal. You know, we just, we just want to enjoy our game without having to worry and not have a target on our back. And that's why being together like this, it makes everyone feel safe and everyone feel welcome. You know, everyone says the word ally, you know, it's really good to be an ally, but I always say she's being a decent person. It's right from wrong. You know, if we look at rainbow laces now, you know, inclusion just isn't just for rainbow laces. It's for the whole year, it's for everything, you know? So it's just about being a decent person, really, and just standing up for your, for your mates, essentially. You know, I go to football with my straight mates as well. They'll all stand by us. We get a little bit of banter and stuff like that. But when you think, like, one in five people that go to sporting events think that anti-LGBTQIA plus language is just harmless banter, but mentally it takes its toll on people and it stops people coming to do something that they love. You're saying it's not as bad as it used to be. How far along are we and, and how much further can we go? Do you know what I mean? Like, to make a difference. Yeah. When we don't have to exist, that's our game. That, that's our end game. We don't want to be here. Once we've achieved that, and just like we're just like everyone else, we just want to go to football, see our mates, have a pint or coffee. You know, don't have to drink all the time, and, and go and watch the match. But once Pride of Irons does not exist, then we've done the job, and the world will be a better place. Simple as that, really.